And those 80 changed all the Africans into Phoenicians. And thus we are taught that the Africans of Carthalus were in fact Caucasians. It's all right when they taught me in, in school in Puerto Rico, I didn't know any difference. I was born in Ethiopia, grew up in Puerto Rico, and the Virgin Islands, and Cuba, and Brazil. So when they were teaching me that at the University of Puerto Rico, I knew no, I, no difference, and so it went down all right. But I accidentally went to Morocco, accidentally, and find that what I had been taught in school was nothing but a pack of lies. Because I then went into the temple, I then went into the museum and found that it was totally different. But then I went on to Italy in the Medici Museum, the Museum of Alessandro de Medici, only to find that Alessandro was an African born in Italy. And no one had told me up to then that there were Roman emperors from Africa, such as Honorius and Septimus Severus and his son Caracalla. No one had took time, had taken time to explain to me anything about the Greeks coming to Egypt and to Nubia and to Ethiopia, depending on who they were, to receive their earliest education, those who had not gone to a little colony, a little enclave in what was then called Lebus, now called Libya, to receive their first glimpse into education taught by Africans. Well, having gone the route of civil engineering and with a bachelor's and then masters in architectural engineering, you would think that I should be satisfied at that point. But I couldn't be satisfied because the fire had burnt. You see, I, had, I was the admirer of two particular people at that time, one called Booker T. Washington, and one called Marcus Garvey, in the reverse, Garvey first and then Washington. Garvey because in my household, Garvey was the word next to the deity. And the relationship between Garvey and Booker T had become so close that I too followed the teachings and philosophical concept of the late Honorable Booker T. Washington. But within that philosophy was something else both men always taught the integrity of the individual. And the integrity of the individual refused, in my case, to accept lies, such as Benny Goodman is the king of swing, and Duke Ellington must have been the emperor of swing. Chick Webb, having taught Jean, Jean Crooker, I was told that Gene Krupa is the best on the drum, but he went to Chick Webb to get to be the best on the drum. I don't know if you know Chick Webb, you know Ella Fitzgerald. That's Chick taught her. I just throw that in to show you that the lie doesn't stop in ancient time. It continues up to today as truth. And so in my further examination, I was dealing with 3.14. All of you here in engineering knows what it's supposed to symbolize. They say it's five. And I was taught that it came from the Greeks. And you know, I believed it. What else could I do? The teacher told me. <laughs> and then when I went to Ethiopia and to Egypt and to Nubia, in the ancient records of the ancient Africans of the Nile, the Nile Valley Africans, there was five being used. 2,000 years before there was such a place as Greece. The first writer of Greece 
that brought Greece into civilization because they said the demarcation between uncivilized and civilized has to do with the time when you start writing history, they call it, prehistoric and historic. And Homer is the Greek first writer. And Homer said that even the concept of God, Zeus and Apollo came from Ethiopia. So when you get in the Greek fraternities and sororities, just remember what Homer said. You must have dealt, you must have dealt with the Iliad and the Odyssey by now. But again, I understand. You see, you have been taught by Alex Haley and others that your history started in the slave trade. But they don't even tell you how the slave trade started. They blame you for enslaving yourself. They say your ancestors sold you out. Nice statement. So I asked the guy, what country, what was the name of the king? Oh, don't worry about that, they sold you out. As if I don't know that the slave trade started with the Pope of the Roman Catholic Church by the name of Martin V and Reverend Bartholomew de Las Casas on the island of Hispaniola, now called Haiti and Santo Domingo. You see, you weren't made, you were, nobody told you it's time to get sorry, to feel bad when some Haitians were being slaughtered on the coast of Florida. That's what it is. If you send a people back to sea on the condition where they were, that's genocide. But you see, you didn't feel anything because you weren't taught to realize that the Haitians are your brothers and sisters because you don't know that the first Africans to be brought in slavery was not taken from Africa, but from Spain and carried to Haiti, then called Hispaniola in 1506, under the aegis of the Pope of the Roman Church and Bartholomew de las Casas. But how did you get in Spain? That was 1506. But you went into Spain, which was then called Iberia, Spain and, and, and Portugal and southern France, as conquerors yourself in 711 under the leadership of Tariq for whom the rock of Gibraltar is now named Gibraltar. Nothing in your education because there's nothing in your textbooks about any of this. So you'll have to go to Spain. Luckily, at the University of, Salama of uh, Barcelona, where I attended for two years, there are these documents, and I had never known anything about them. I had not known that the Africans called Moors had ruled Spain from 711 until 1485. The last of them losing power at a place called Granada. I was always wondering why is it that 90% of all the songs coming out of Spain were singing to La Morena, the black woman. So how come in this country, 90% of all the songs, the records, the tapes, everything is La Morena this and La Morena that. It is when I went there I found out La Morena raised hell in Spain. She's still raising hell in Montgomery, Alabama, and in Tuskegee, Alabama, and in Tuskegee Institute. I could look around and see her. <laughs> of course, the first one of you threw a good baseball and a good basketball, forget that she could raise hell. You don't want her for a wife anymore. You hit the numbers, you don't want her for a wife. Some of you forget you look like your mama. Sorry, fellows. Try one, it may be good for your health. 
But we must go back and ask ourselves, why is this so? And I said to the students today at the high school, even the paper you write on, 